Some media outlets have been hyping tomato flu as a newly emerging virus. But this highly contagious viral infection is probably not new at all. In fact, it may not even be a type of flu. In this video, we'll explore the so-called tomato flu, its symptoms, and how it compares to more serious viral infections. I'll also share a few home remedies and treatment methods to help mitigate the symptoms of this virus. So if you're ready, let's get into it. So what exactly is the tomato flu? Media outlets refer to this virus as the tomato flu because it causes red inflamed blisters that resemble, you guessed it, tomatoes. In some cases, the painful blisters may even be as large as tomatoes. Tomato flu acts as an endemic, which means it affects certain people in a specific region. It's an illness that mostly affects young children. However, adults with compromised immune systems may also contract this virus. It first appeared in India in May of 2022. Health officials reported the condition in more than 82 children under the age of 5 in Kerala, a state on India's tropical Malabar coast. By July, officials in the neighboring states of Tamil Nadu and Odisha had confirmed cases of tomato flu in 26 more children ages 1 to 9 years old. And unfortunately, some health officials are worried that tomato flu may spread to healthy adults, and many are also concerned that it will spread outside of India. Now, let's talk about the causes. Researchers are still working to understand tomato flu and its causes. The evidence so far suggests that it's just another type of hand, foot, and mouth disease, which is a common illness that affects mostly children. Tomato flu may develop after exposure to a virus. More specifically, it is caused by an enterovirus, which is a group of viruses that enter through a person's mouth and are absorbed into the gut. Sometimes the viruses can travel to the central nervous system, including the brain and spinal cord or other parts of the body. Children are more likely to become infected with enteroviruses because they often put their hands and other objects in their mouth. Infections can also happen through the use of diapers and by touching infected surfaces. Now, let's discuss the signs and symptoms. The early symptoms of tomato flu are similar to other viral infections. In its early stages, tomato flu causes fever, rashes, and joint pain. Later, the blisters that give tomato flu its nickname appear on various parts of the body. These blisters can be quite painful and grow large. Other symptoms of tomato flu include fatigue, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, swelling of joints, body aches, and other common flu-like symptoms. Doctors will usually order lab tests for children with these signs and symptoms in order to rule out other types of infections which can cause similar symptoms. Once other infectious diseases are ruled out, then doctors may diagnose the child with having tomato flu. Now let's talk about prevention. To prevent the spread of tomato flu, it's important to isolate the infected person as soon as possible. Try to keep the child isolated for 5 to 7 days after symptoms first appear to prevent the spread of infection to others. Proper hand hygiene is also important because the virus can spread when a child touches infected materials and then puts their hands in their mouth. Hand washing removes viruses from the child's hand. Also, be sure to sanitize toys, clothes, eating utensils, and all other items that the child comes into contact with that may be touched by other children. Limit sharing these items between children. Next, let's talk about the treatment. The treatment of tomato flu is similar to other diseases and it focuses on isolation, getting plenty of rest, and drinking plenty of fluids. Applying a warm compress to the blisters, rashes, and irritated skin can help reduce skin discomfort. In addition, acetaminophen can help with body aches. After consulting with a doctor, there are also a few home remedies that parents can use to treat their children with tomato flu. Encouraging the child to maintain good hygiene can help prevent the spread of this virus. Also, keeping surfaces clean and washing toys, clothing, and other objects can also help reduce transmission. To reduce the risk of skin infections, parents should discourage their sick child from scratching or picking at rashes and blisters. Sweating from fever, diarrhea, and vomiting can all cause dehydration. Therefore, parents should encourage infected children to drink plenty of fluids to reduce dehydration. Children infected with tomato flu should rest and get extra sleep. The body's immune system produces proteins known as cytokines during sleep. Cytokines play an important role in fever, wound healing, inflammation, tissue repair, and other functions that support healing from infections. 
Now, let's go through some frequently asked questions about tomato flu. First, why is it called tomato flu? As previously mentioned, people call the virus tomato flu because it causes a rash and round red skin lesions that look like tomatoes. These lesions can grow rather large in some cases. Why does the tomato flu mostly affect children? Youngsters are at a higher risk for contracting tomato flu or other enteroviruses because they are more likely to put toys, bedding, clothing, and other personal items into their mouths. This gives enteroviruses easy access to the child's digestive tract where it can cause an infection. The virus may also be spread through touch. In other words, the child may touch the contaminated object and then put their fingers in or near their mouth, where the infection gains access to the digestive tract. Should parents in the United States be worried about the tomato flu? At this time, all cases of the tomato flu originated in India. However, two children developed symptoms upon returning to their home in the UK after a month-long holiday in India with their family. Parents in the United States should not worry about tomato flu at this point unless they travel to India or are in close contact with children who have recently been in that nation. Therefore, while tomato flu does not currently present the same potential for widespread illness as COVID-19 did, many people are keeping a watchful eye on this non-fatal yet highly contagious illness. For more information about tomato flu, consult with a pediatrician or general practitioner. If you want to support the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And there should be some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right about now that I think you will enjoy. And just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day and as always, breathe easy my friend.